At the end of the 19th century, when humanity still did not know what armored warfare was, the early attempts to develop armored vehicles were already brewing in the minds of some designers. Of course, this line of thinking was not surprising. On one hand, the use of motor vehicles was becoming more common, and on the other hand, the use of armor for protection in actual combat was a consensus, with warships being the most typical example. However, this new concept of armored vehicles was still in the early stages of development. Frederick Richard Sims is one of the early pioneers in the construction of armored vehicles. Originally German, he later moved to London and established a company there. In the 1890s, he founded the Royal Automobile Club of Great Britain and attempted to build armored vehicles. Sims' armored vehicle was not a motor vehicle, but a four-wheeled bicycle with armor plates attached around it for protection. The upper armor was slightly inclined inward, unlike the sharp angles of the early armored vehicles we are familiar with. Its armor transitioned into an arc shape. The vehicle was equipped with water-cooled machine guns arranged at the front and rear. It did not have a standard turret, but as long as it was not the kind of machine gun with strange moving parts like a potato digger, basically any normal machine gun could be used. Driving this armored vehicle was not easy, as its power relied entirely on the members pedaling with their feet. Friends who have ridden a tandem bicycle are probably not unfamiliar with this, but have definitely never tried pedaling with a steel plate wrapped around the bike. The weight, I believe, requires no further introduction. It must be admitted that Sim's armored vehicle was very primitive, as it was an early concept of an armored vehicle by the designer. Its immaturity was also understandable, but this did not mean that Sim's armored vehicle was a failure. In April 1899, Vickers and his son, along with a friend, received an order from the British Army to produce an armored vehicle. So they attempted to build it on a Daimler car chassis. Vickers' design was actually an upgrade based on Sim's armored vehicle. It was more like giving it a reliable chassis, but considering the level of automobile technology at the time, the performance of this new generation of Sim's armored vehicle was also quite worrisome. Its armor reached a thickness of 6 mm, powered by a 16 horsepower, 3.3 liter four cylinder Daimler engine, capable of achieving a maximum road speed of 14.5 km. An interesting aspect of the weapons was the design of two small rotating turrets at the front and rear, each equipped with a Maxim machine gun. Compared to the previous model, the protection and the suppressing capability of the machine guns were improved. There were also reports of a QF-1 pounder gun, perhaps there were plans to install this small gun in one of the turrets. The designer also planned to install an additional generator, or to connect a generator to other moving parts of the vehicle through a belt or similar structure. The electric power from the generator could supply lighting equipment, and there were plans to electrify the armor surface of the vehicle, so that no one would dare to climb the armored vehicle. The vehicle participated in some exhibitions in the early 20th century, but did not attract the interest of other countries. It is unknown how the military viewed it, but it indeed had many problems, such as its power system being too fragile. It was basically difficult to maneuver off-road, and its power and transmission systems did encounter many failures during testing. Vickers planned to upgrade the power, but it ultimately did not come to fruition. As an early exploration of armored vehicles by humanity, Sim's armored vehicle certainly had many problems and even lacked practical value. However, Vickers and others accumulated design experience through it, which was a technical advancement in itself.